my name is Nick. Um, I, I found out about this program um, through the peer support at the VA um, in Burlington. I was, I've been looking at getting into a, a service dog program um, for the last probably five or six years, um, but was not really in the, the place to do so medically. So uh, as part of the like screening process for their program, they needed like, information from the doctors. And so I, I went in and you know, asked my doctors for like a letter of support um, for getting into a, a service dog program. Um, and in doing so, the doctor talked to the peer support guy and he was like, well, we actually have this local program that she's, she's down in Bennington uh, that you might give a try and you know, check at least check it out. And so I, I got online and researched a little bit and then contacted Michelle and um, I was told they actually had a couple of dogs lined up that didn't have humans to go with them. So I, I loaded up my family and came down for a weekend and we came and checked out the facility. So just kind of been you know, with him for the last two months now. Been working. We're going to be training him to do uh, lift assist. I've got some spinal problems that are going to continue to get worse as I get older. Um, so having the ability to have something there to get me up when I go down uh, is going to be huge. Check and sit. That, sit. Nope, check and sit. Counselor suggest that it'd probably be a good idea for me to get a service for my needs from some of my issues from being deployed a couple of times. Um, I was given Michelle's information and I contacted her and through conversations I realized she's a pretty great lady and you know she wanted to help me out. Um, so I did the interview process with her and this is Adam. This is the dog she found for me. Adam came from another veteran. Um, unfortunately, he passed away. His wife had passed away six months earlier. And Adam, we have him on a little detox because he used to go to the A&W in Middlebury every day and get a cheeseburger. I've had Adam for four weeks now, going on five. and. He's a great dog. I mean, he's got a personality of his own. He's three years old. Um, and he's just, he can be stubborn, but he's the most lovable dog you could ever own. And uh, I'm hoping that with this program, with some of my needs, um, mentally and physically, that Adam's gonna be a partner to help me with that. And I have a lot of issues with trying to get on back into the environment 
And um, since I've been home, I've had a hard time in that process. And I don't feel like I can depend on a lot of people. And I know I can depend on this guy because his love is true. And like I said, it's the best thing that ever happened to me coming into this program. Um, the commitment to taking care of the dogs, you know, when he comes and licks you in the, well, he's a bed hog, but when he comes and licks you in the face at three o'clock in the morning because all of a sudden, you know, something didn't agree with him that he ate and he wants to go out, you know, you need, whether it's 20 below or not, you need to take him out. Take him out yeah. And, you know, his needs come first. Mm -hmm. And that's good because that, that's, that's a healthy thing for me because once again, I'm feeling useful and needed and there's a commitment and that's a strong commitment. You know, we're partners, so you need to take care of your buddy. And so, and with coming down here, it is, it is a, a hard commitment. Um, financially, you know, it, it could be a burden. I would like to see the VA do more for people in this process. I think the VA is geared more toward, they'd like to send you to California, pay $50,000 for a dog, and send you there for three weeks, and you don't even know if you're gonna bond with the dog you're getting. Right. Michelle, on the other hand, does an outstanding job. She, you know, before we even started training, I was introduced to Adam, and from that moment on, she was there observing how the dog was acting to me and how I was acting to the dog, and she won't even start doing the program until she's sure that the dog's committed to you and you're committed to the dog and the bond's gonna be strong. Right. Um, it's a very strong bond now. Obviously. And, and that's, this is just a short period of time. Yeah. Um, and I, he's a very smart dog, and I could see myself almost, you know, him reading my mind, what I want, you know. But just to know that I have this animal here, that when I'm having a bad day, he knows, he senses it, you know. He'll come, he'll make sure that I make, he's making me aware that Something's not right with me, so I'm focused on it and making the corrections that I need to make before I end up in a dark place. And plus, you know, in the military, somebody's always got your back. And he definitely will always have my back. Is there anything else you'd like to say? I would just like to... I get a little emotional. I wish the community would do more for the veterans, not just myself, but everybody that served. Um, you come home and you don't feel welcome and you don't feel like you have a place anymore. And it's a shame because we're the ones that do the things that need to be done and protect this country so that people can make their own decisions. Uh, my name is Nick. I'm from Swanton. Um, this is Blue. Uh, he's uh, maybe three and a half years old. Uh, I've had him uh, for three years. And um, she let me uh, bring him through the program now. Um, uh, I'm a disabled vet. I'm on 100%. Um, Unemployability for PTSD. Um, I I learned about this program from uh, Class One, um, Misha Pimble Belkin. He's a friend of mine, and um, he has a service dog Meadow, and I've spent a lot of time around him and her. Um, I started going out with Vermont Adaptive. Um, I think four years ago, okay. and um, Misha went through, I think, in 2016, and I met him shortly after that, and uh, I knew about, I knew about this program for, uh, for years. Um, I always wanted to bring Blue through it, but I never was in a, a place um, where I could, um, or I could make a phone call, or I could send an email, or anything like that. Um, I was, uh, just think that stuff is not for me, it's for other people, and I'm not supposed to be using 
any of the services they're for you know way more way more <laughs> so way more uh, deserving vets um, I think a lot of vets just we all kind of feel that way yeah like, so you know that that stuff's not for me that's for X Y and Z and if you can't see if you can't visibly see my scars then yeah, it's not really it's not really real uh, it's just it you know, it feels like if you you know if you are missing a leg or something then you can just be like well and everybody just kind of gets it and uh, you know he's he's been he was a big help getting getting squared away to get in here um, that was actually that was a, a major factor in getting in asking to get into this was like I you know, I have my stuff where I isolate and I don't leave the house. I don't go places unless I absolutely have to. I mean, like, I won't go into the grocery store unless, like, I absolutely have to. And even then, it's it's really, there's just a lot of stupid stuff that's really, it seems so benign for everyone else, but it's like, I can't do it. And it, it, it makes me feel horrible inside. And uh, so... I I had been depressed for like the last two years, like really hard. And I wanted to get to a place where I felt like, I felt like he wasn't, I felt like I wasn't being uh, as attentive or I thought I, I wasn't, I thought he had a bad life. And that like, you know, he was, I don't know how to explain it. Like he, he wasn't getting, He's so smart and he can do so much that he needed more. Uh, a lot of days, I just feel completely disconnected and that like, my dog hates me. And I know that's not the case, but that rolls back into the, just the self-talk and the, I mean, look, I mean, I've, I felt like, I felt I did a lot of good things in the Navy. My service ended terribly. And what happened to me wasn't my fault. And it has unfortunately defined me for the last well over a decade. So that bleeds into everything. That bleeds into my interactions with him. That bleeds like, like right now he seems perfectly calm and fine. I, I think I don't even know. So, uh, like, if anything, from this, I just want him to be happier. I want him to be able to go places. I'd like to regain some confidence that I just don't have. I don't have any social interactions. I don't. I don't feel like there's a place for me in the world. I don't feel connected to anything or anyone. And I just trying to feel. Um, so we actually graduated my first class, which was um, ended up being one student, Misha, which ironically um, we have now Nicholas in the class with his dog because of the outreach with him and also Alex, um, who is in class four. Um, so it's pretty good network and because of that, um, we just started growing, um, and but it's been taking approximately a year to get each class through. Um, one of the big things that I find is the quality of the teams that we're producing here um, far exceeds a lot of the other programs that are out there, um, but everybody has their uniqueness as to what they're doing. Um, a lot of programs are choosing to raise money purchase a dog and then send that dog to a local dog trainer. Um, there are bigger programs out there where you may go for 21 days and you meet a pre-trained dog and then you leave. Um, I'm choosing to stick with this program where these guys are here. Um, they're training with a brand new dog. They're learning these skills together. And most importantly, they're building that bond right from the start with the two of them. 
and we don't graduate until that bond has started to solidify. It won't be perfect at this point. It's a two to three year process before the two will gel. However, they're confident that their dog will perform the tasks that they need should they need them at a spur of the moment. If somebody would like to donate, what's the best way to contact you? Uh, we have several different ways. We have an email, which is um, from montpaws257 at gmail.com. We also have our website, montpawsandboots.org. We have our Facebook site. Uh, we now have a Twitter site. I haven't gotten into TikTok or anything of like that yet. Uh, but, and we also, you know, have the good old fashioned US mail, you know, and that's from Mont Paws and Boots at PO Box 257. Um, and there's a lot of meaning behind everything having a 257 at the end, because that was my police canine's number. So it's easy. Thank you very much. Thank you.